Ocean acidification occurs when chemicals like CO2 falls from the atmosphere after being excreted from cars, planes, fossil fuels, power plants. When they go into the ocean water, they break down molecules and form carbonic acid. That acid erodes at carbon-based life form shells like gastropods like snails, the skeleton of fish, copepods, nautilus, things like that. This whole problem with ocean acidification is literally like a giant game of Jenga. If you pull one brick out of the bottom, which say that brick would be zooplankton forming their shells, then it would all collapse, because tuna have to eat the zooplankton, so do mackerel, and we eat both tuna and mackerel. We are looking at nearly a complete collapse in the ocean food chain, and it's not just going to be zooplankton, it's also going to be the animals like polyps living in coral that are going to be dying as well. So this isn't just going to affect the pelagic waters, it's going to affect inland waters around the coastal US, Brazil, Canada, Bermuda, anywhere with life is going to be affected by the ocean acidification. We're doing an experiment to see how the acidity of the water in the ocean affects different life. We took two tanks of salt water in a controlled environment the same temperature. We put unhatched zooplankton eggs in them, but one we filled with vinegar, which would simulate a higher acidic ocean. From this experiment, we found that the more acidity in the water, the less likely they are to survive. So we found a lot of them that had grown tails, but they hadn't fully grown. So even these really small shrimp that you have to use a microscope to be able to see affect the entire world population because different animals need to eat them and, and eventually it will affect us because bigger fish we eat won't be alive. Uh, another victim of the ocean acidification would be corals as well. Coral makes a good test dummy because like zooplankton and nautilus and gastropods, they form their shell with carbon. Beacon is a group of scientists here at BIOS who are studying the effects of ocean acidification on coral, mainly in local waters around Bermuda. I'm Cassia White. I've been working with the Bermuda program for the last five years now. Right now, here on the wet bench, you see some adult coral, uh, Parides asteroides, or the mustard hill coral. What we're doing here is that I'm running an experiment this summer, working on intersite variation among the patch reef corals and the rim reef corals. So we collect the larvae, we put them into uh, beakers like this, and we take them into the lab and settle them onto some terracotta tiles where they stay there for 48 hours and after the 48 hour period we check for settlement. We have various CO2 conditions inside of the lab and a temperature. So we try to keep the temperature constant as possible. The CO2 conditions are to basically liken it to the ocean acidification events that will be happening in the wild, in the ocean, if humans continue to cause more anthropogenic damage. This lab specifically is the Ocean Acidification Lab, and we look specifically at coral recruits. And at the end of the experiment, we want to see if there's any differences between um, the patch and rim reef as far as coral health. So if the rim are more able to handle the effects of ocean acidification, um, they're healthier, they have higher liver content, their calcification is better. And in the end, if we have conservation-wise only limited resources to save certain reefs, well, we want to save the ones that are more able to handle onsets of ocean acidification and anthropogenic climate change, basically. Coral reefs act as huge main ecosystems for hundreds of fish, hundreds of invertebrates. They provide so much protection and they provide so much to the water chemistry of the ocean. So many people in the world rely on coral reefs and rely on the resources that coral reefs provide. And without them, I mean, as a human, I think we'll see a direct impact in amount of food, and amount of tourism, and amount of new technology that can come from the coral reefs in terms of medicine. Things would change so much if coral reefs started disappearing. I've learned that humans aren't the only life form on Earth, and that there's a lot of animals under us that it may not seem, but they're a lot more delicate than we think. We can solve this problem by just conserving energy. All we really need to do is not use things we don't need. If there's a room with a light on, nobody's in there, just turn the light off. If you can pick somebody up in your car and they don't have to drive, just pick them up. Because by every day, more acid is dissolving away at carbon-based life forms in the ocean. And the time to act would be now.